Abraham begins to realize that uh, his son needs a bride. And so he calls upon his servant and he says, he makes his covenant with his servant. He says, uh, you know, don't take anybody from the land of the Canaanites. They're idol worshipers and we don't want um, an idol worshiper to uh, be yoked with God's man, Isaac, the one that God had called to bring the Messiah into the world. So this is a, a very important relationship. I mean, Jesus was gonna come. The people of Israel were gonna come through this relationship. And so God sends his servant out and his servant goes to the land of his fathers where he might be able to find a suitable bride for, her, for the husband. And I wanna take it up in that, at that um, and Abraham says, if the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are free from this oath, but don't let my son go back there. So he wanted to keep his son in the promised land where God had promised them the land, but um, he did want him, the servant to go and get a bride for him. So the Lord, uh, the, the, so the man shows up and he's, he's thinking to himself, okay, if, if the woman uh, not only gives me water, but gives my camel water, then this is the one that God has for me. So he prays, and, and here it says, Lord God of my master, Abraham, make this happen for me today and show kindness to my master, Abraham. I am standing here at the spring where the daughters of men of the town are coming out to draw water. Let the girl to whom I say, please lower your water jug so that I may drink, and who responds, Drink and I will water your camels also. Let her be the one you have, and listen to this word, appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my Lord. Before he had finished speaking, there was Rebekah, daughter of Bethel, son of Makkah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, coming with a jug on her shoulder. Now the girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had been intimate with her. She went down to the spring, filling, filled her jug, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me have a drink of your water from your jug. And she replied, Drink, my lord. She quickly lowered her jug to the hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I, I will also water your camels until they have enough to drink. She quickly emptied her jug into the trough and hurried to the well again to draw water. She drew water for the, all, the, all the camels while the man sat silently and watched her to see whether or not the Lord had made his journey a success. As the camel finished drinking, the, Lord, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel and, a, and wrists of gold weighing 10 shekels and gave it to her and said, whose daughter are you? And he asked, please tell me, is there room in your house? And she answered, I am the son of, of Bethiel, son of, of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahar. She said to him, we have plenty of straw and feed to spend the night. And then listen to this guy. We, then the man knelt low, worshiped the Lord and said, blessed be the Lord, the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not withheld his kindness and faithfulness from my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on this journey to the house of my master's relatives. So what's the application there? It's a lot, right? Here's the application. God provided Isaac a wife. He didn't, I mean, you know, we don't see Abra, I mean, we don't see Adam. You know, God created all the animals, had him name all the animals, and, he, and then we don't see Adam go, hey, I'm gonna take that monkey, I'm gonna take that donkey, jackass, I'm gonna take that whatever, right? We don't see that happening. Um, hey, you know what, I'm gonna go out and find me an orangutan. No, Adam waited for God to provide the wife for him. And while he was resting, God provided the wife. Yes. And what did, what did he have to do? Go to sleep, right? That's what he did. God put him to sleep, took a rib out, and we're all missing our rib, man. Men, you're missing a rib. Women, you're missing um, uh, 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 your husband. But what we don't want you to do is end up with a jackass, a donkey, a orangutan, or anything else. We want you to end up with God's man. So, application. Application. Why don't we share our story? Yes. First, well, you go. <laughs> no, I always like it better when you tell it. Okay. 
So uh, I got invited to teach at this leadership thing at Bethany's Church uh, for the college and career, and it was a camp. And um, the cool thing was is uh, a friend of mine, Victor Borchard, and I would go up when we were in Austria and pray for our wives every weekend. We went to Bible college Friday. in Austria. So yes. while they were at Bible college. While we were at Bible college, we went up on the, 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 the Austrian Alps, and we would plead with the Lord for our spouses. And um, the interesting thing is, is I went back to go to Bible college in California and Victor stayed over there. Victor met a girl from San Luis Obispo. Well, I, he asked me to be best man in his, his wedding. <clears throat> and I show up at the wedding and with the pastor and, the, and um, Bethany was watching the pastor's kids, which I didn't really meet her there. So he had, that's when he, he had me come back to this camp to speak. Bethany was at the camp and Bethany and I met. Well, uh, I lent my kit, my car to the pastor's wife because they only had one car at the time and their three-year-old lost my keys. And so when I get back about an hour and a half away back to his house, I had a speaking engagement that night in Monterey, which was about two hours away and we had no keys. So we searched everywhere. We tried to get keys, couldn't get them. And so Bethany and her friends offered to give me a ride up to my another speaking engagement about two and a half, two, two about two hours away. Mm -hmm. Well, everything was running late and we get in the car together and um, she went to pick up her friends and her friends backed out. So it was just Bethany and I in the car. So I called the pastor, I'm like, man, I just, I'm not comfortable riding all the way up there with this girl, you know, just want to keep accountable. This is what I'm doing, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, make a long story short, I went up there and spoke to a youth group with about 2000 kids in it. And I saw Bethany in the back on her face praying. And I asked her to pray, but I didn't know she was like literally going to take it that seriously. And so I was like, hmm, I'm up there trying to preach. And I was like looking back at her going, hmm, that's interesting. Well, anyways, make a long story short, that began our relationship, our friendship, I should say. Our friendship. Our friendship. Um, and so we got to know each other. She went to Bible college in Hungary and we began to write letters back and forth. <laughs> And then, the, and then the Lord brought us together in that time. But what we decided to do is we decided not to kiss until our wedding day. And both of us have histories. We're not, we haven't been angels. We both have pasts. But we wanted to be chaste virgins for the Lord. And we wanted to keep our relationship pure. The cool thing is, is it, Bethany was working at the high school. So I get Bethany a job at the high school in the church, it's a mega church down in San Diego that had this huge high school, with like in, in, in elementary school that had like 500 kids. And um, I got her a job there, but the, the thing that really affected so many kids was just Bethany and I's relationship. We had like, set, what, 750 people at her wedding, like all the kids from her school came and they saw the testimony of the Lord of how we kept ourselves, but we didn't kiss until our wedding day. And so, um, but here, here's, here's how the Lord confirmed it so many different ways. Everybody was in agreement in our families, our friends. Everybody was like, a matter of fact, I had pastors coming up to me and saying, Garrett, if you don't marry that girl, you're the biggest idiot that ever hit the face of this planet. Um, I had a janitor drive up to me one time, uh, and he drove up to me while I was walking across the campus. He said, Garrett, I got a word from the Lord for you. And I'm like, okay, what's that? And he goes, if you don't marry that girl, this is the one the Lord has brought for you. You will be in the wilderness for seven years. And he boom, drives off in his cart and leaves me standing there. I'm like, well, that was weird. But at the same time, like you had been praying for God to confirm it for months. Like you'd been praying for a wife. And then when you met me, you were praying for God to confirm it. And so he did in so many different ways. So many different ways. And when I was back there praying at that meeting, I had just recently rededicated my life to the Lord, come back to the Lord from a life of partying and just being horrible and bad. And I really just wanted to seek the Lord and have a relationship with Jesus and not get off track, even if it was this really godly man who was passionate about Jesus. And so at that meeting, I was praying for the kids and everything. And I, God gave me a vision that, Bethany, as you pursue your relationship with me, you're going to trip over the man that I have for you. You don't have to go search for him. You don't have to go look for him. Just keep following me and I will make it so clear that you literally can't even walk. You're going to trip over this guy. And 
I had really wanted to go deep with the Lord. And so I had been talking to my friends about Bible college. That's why I picked Hungary because of Garrett. I wanted to lay him on the altar and be like, Lord, I know that this is an awesome, passionate, on fire for Jesus man, but I still want to pick you. So I'm going to, by faith, lay him on the altar, which in my life meant I'm going to go the farthest location I can away from him. And God, if you have this man for me, then you're going to have to resurrect it. You're going to have to bring it to pass. So I go to Bible college over in Hungary and I keep thinking about him. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to bring my thoughts into obedience to Christ right now. I don't want to keep thinking about Garrett. So I'm going to start praying for his wife in his ministry and his family. And so I spent that whole semester doing that. And at the very end of the semester, finally was like, okay, God, I want to be his wife. Like I'm sick of praying for his family. I want to be his wife. And during that time of me praying, like we had, we've mentioned it before, but like I would write a letter um, praying for him and just talking to him and then mail it and then he would get in the mail like a week or so later and it would be the verses that he was in that morning in his devotions like just little tiny things that God was doing constantly just to encourage us to keep going and so then finally when I did come back home from Bible college we fasted and prayed and like right, is this before you stopped being at work or after I'm just kidding Oh my stop. gosh, I did not stalk him. Okay. <laughs> so, you want to bring that story up? Great, now I have to tell it. So, I come back from Bible college, unannounced. I didn't tell anyone I was coming home. I just bought a plane ticket and showed up um, back in the States. And he had gotten a job working at, um, he was an assistant pa or, um, an intern pastor at a church in San Diego. So I figured, all right, I'm just going to walk in the door and then see his reaction. And if he's excited to see me, then I'll know there's something here because I'm sick of like You put out another page too. He gets some more for me to stay. Well, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Right. So I'm sick of praying for him. Like, Lord, you have to confirm, like, do I just need to like kill this thing or is there something here? So I showed up his work and I was like, okay, if he's excited to see me, I'll know that there's something here. And maybe he even he'll ask me to stay around because I have no plans, like literally no plans. Um, and if he's weird, then I'll leave and I'll go back to my parents' house in um, Southern California. Yeah, California. And um, so I walked in the door and the secretaries who had been praying, Garrett had asked them to join him in praying for a wife. Yeah. Um, there was some sweet, amazing older women, godly women. And so they had been praying for him. And I come in and I say, I'm here to say, see Garrett Grofner. And they go back there to his office. They walk in the office and say, Garrett, your wife is here. you got to understand, these, and these ladies have tried to set me up. I mean, we're talking a church of 8,500 people. So there was like, everybody was trying to set me up. And, he was the I eligible mean, was, bachelor. I, I mean, it camp. was like crazy. I mean, I, you know, oh, you got to be my granddaughter. And, <laughs> oh, you got to meet my whatever. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. You want to come over for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> It um, was like, it was like tragic. So yeah, so she came in and said, your wife is here. Yep. And we were like, what? And I was like, what? And I said, bring her in. And so they brought Bethany in and I was like, well, hi, what are you doing here? And she kind of explained to me that she's kind of just stopped by. And I said, well, do you want to stay? And I called my buddy immediately who was getting married. And I say, hey, can he stay? Can, can, I... can Bethany stay with um, uh, your fiance? And they said, absolutely. So we made arrangements and that's when she um, stayed with me with in the in the town. And um, stayed for a week mm -hmm. and hung out, went to all the services, mm -hmm. served at the Wednesday night yeah. barbecue. Mm -hmm. And that's and when that's your when friends started to be like, dude. Dude, you gotta marry her, <laughs> dude. But, but here's a cool thing though. I mean, my buddy and I, Victor, were praying up on the mountain. And I and and I met and, and we're praying for our wives. That's mainly what our prayer was when we go up there. We pray for other stuff too. But when we came back to the states, and I was the best man in his wedding, God was answering those prayers that we prayed a year before by bringing me into the the life of this pastor, who then in turn invited me to speak at where the retreat that she was at for their leadership team, and I spoke at the leadership team, and that's how we connected. So you don't have to go out and pound the bush in, in the Garden of Eden looking in, uh, for an orangutan. I mean, you don't. Or a monkey or an elephant or whatever. You just wait on the Lord. Um, and I can't encourage you enough. 
I mean, I, the story in Genesis that we read today was magnificent because he cried out to the Lord. God, God, God laid it on Abraham's heart. Abraham sent his, his servant, and then the servant prayed, and God brought the Messiah's great, 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 grandmother, however many greats it is, grandmother on the scene. And so God's plans can't be thwarted. But guys, if you make a decision in the flesh, you're going to regret it forever. Well, and that's, I think, our big motivation for just asking God to confirm it in so many ways was I knew I've seen marriages. I knew that we're gonna hit hard times. I know that we're gonna not get along sometimes. But if I know that I know that I know that I know that God has called me to marry this person, that God has brought this person into my life, there's it's never gonna cross my mind, oh, should we call it quits? You know, like, no, we're just going through a rough time. God has ordained this marriage. He's in it. We just need to keep pursuing the Lord. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're totally over time right now. but We're over time. Um, we are. Just the encouragement that God deeply cares about every facet of your life. So why wouldn't he want to be intimately involved in the most important relationship outside of your salvation? Like, it's your salvation, your marriage, your kids, and then it flows from there. If you get those right you're gonna have blessing. God promises blessing. So he uses the marriage as a picture of his relationship with the church. So I think he wants to be involved in your, your marriage. Now, your th- those of you that are watching that may think, oh, well, I made a bad decision. Maybe I didn't wait on the Lord. No, if you're married, then God's in it. God's gonna bless it. And now you're committed for life. I mean, that's just Romans a fact. Romans 20. Like he he, he works all walk, your decisions yeah, together for good. Work but I will also say that if you're divorced and remarried, then you need to make this marriage count. You know, um, there's forgiveness. There's there's the, the blood the of Jesus of Christ. He's the God of redemption. He's the God of forgiveness. And he can uh, turn beauty from ashes. So um, stay and married. If you're love single your wife. right now, God has called you away to that special place. And he wants to be your everything right now. So just continue to walk in that. Continue to pursue God. And he's going to bring all, all the rest to yeah, happen. So. Yeah. And I, I'd like to say one more thing, too. It, sometimes sinners blow marriages up. I mean, you you know, God might have ordained it. Doesn't mean that we can't ruin it by our sinful nature, our sinful behavior, our cheating, our beating, or whatever it may be. Um, that God is a God who is a redeeming God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. And so he can um, take the things that, um, you know, he can replace what the locusts have eaten in a marriage, too. If you're married, um, stay married. Um, if, if, you, if you're remarried, stay married. You know, so there's hope for everybody. So I, I don't want to discourage yeah. you. But I am speaking to the youth right now. Man, if, if, there are, if, if everybody around you has a check in their spirit about this relationship... Run. Run. I Please. mean, if somebody, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not like a, I don't lord over the sheep, but if I see a, if I see a, I can spot a loser because I used to be one. <laughs> I can spot a, 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 a bad loser. guy, a loser yeah. a mile away. So, um, you know, people are going to say, yeah, you yeah, might want to pray and fast about that a little more. So Bethany and I prayed and fasted and God brought us together and it, it I couldn't even imagine being married to somebody else. Um, so wait, wait for God. It's been such a blessing. It's been such an amazing time uh, of, of ministry together. She's my, she's my helpmate. She's not just my helpmate, but she is engaged in the gospel of Jesus Christ. She's engaged in um, seeing people be encouraged and led to the Lord. And so, I mean, that's what I, that, that's all I could ever ask for is somebody that would uh, not, that, you know, I was missing a rib and I got it. And um, she's my helper. She's my helpmate. Um, I couldn't do what we do without her. And so wait upon the Lord. And um, God is sovereign. And he's got that perfect person for you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thanks for hanging you with wanna, us so long. Why don't you long? pray real quick, babe? All right. Lord, I just thank you so much that you deeply desire to be involved in every aspect of our lives. God, I thank you that as we wait on you, Lord, you make miracles happen. 
God, you confirm your love in so many different ways as we just pursue a relationship with you. So God, I just ask for your people right now that they would be encouraged to just pursue you, that they would run hard after you and watch you bring to pass everything that their heart desires. Lord, you have put those desires in their hearts. You've created them with those desires. So why would you not fulfill them? So God, help everyone who is on here right now just to be encouraged to stand strong and pursue you and wait for you and not jump the gun and regret it afterwards, but just to continue to um, listen to the people around them that love them deeply and God, that you would help us all to just be satisfied with what you have for us at this moment, trusting that you have something else for us tomorrow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. One more thing, hold on before we turn it off. <laughs> I just saw my friend Stephen Nowak join us on down there, and uh, I have a funny story, but uh, the both of us were praying for these two girls, and um, we were kind of devastated when they kind of threw us to, they kicked us to the curb. They're like different girl, different, different friend. Different, okay, different girl, Victor, different, not, not Victor, Austria. this other guy from Bible College, I just saw him come up, he's a, he's a pastor in England. Oh my gosh. And... Um, Man, if, if we'd ended up with those two girls... So you guys were crushing on some other girls and it didn't work out. It didn't work okay. out. And I, I can tell you right now, both of us are praising God right now that it didn't work out.